this, let me try and uh, put before you the sort of schema by which we have been working. The proposal, I think, at the conference, I'm not a part of the design group, but as I understand the design of the conference is that every single bishop should have a voice. That the timid as well as the confident should be able to speak from their heart and their mind and be listened to with deep and profound respect. And so the way these happen, of course, is through our Bible studies in the morning where a small group of about seven or eight bishops meet under the word of God and reflect together on the scriptures and bring their own perspectives to bear. Then those eight bishops move into a group of about 40, which forms the Indaba process. And the Indaba process, as has been outlined, of course, is a respectful way of listening to one another. And varieties of questions and themes are given to us. And then we reflect upon them together, first in small groups of four or five, then as the whole 40 together. Uh, they have an animator, a person who helps the process, and a reporter who, who takes records what the groups are saying uh, to each other uh, in a variety of ways. And then there is each group was asked towards the beginning of the conference uh, to nominate three persons from their group who would form the reflections group. And so those have now been chosen, and we've begun our work. And the task of the listener, so the reports come in, and then there are, as you can imagine, 16 reports on each particular theme. And then the listener's task, or the reflection's task, as we meet together, is not only the content of what we receive, but also the spirit and the soul of the discussion that took place. And so they, it, there's a checks and balances, I suppose, of all that's going on in the conference so that nothing is lost. And yet to provide a document, I think, at the end of the conference that reflects a narrative, not an encyclical, but a narrative, uh, not large reports, but again, what is happening uh, as bishops engage with one another in respectful conversation, what could happen? So the first document that we have prepared uh, of course, has got a number of uh, positives, uh, as you can see, but also we have still to receive uh, some reports from some of the groups, and that's still being sorted out. And by tomorrow, tomorrow evening, in fact, we should be able to produce a much fuller document, which has got all the reports from the various groups together, and they will be translated, of course, into the languages. The other process that we have had is that we, we produced this first document over the weekend from the various reports, and they're all there, the, the basic reports that have come to us from each of the groups. Uh, that will now go before, the, the, that particular report will go before a hearing. Uh, they go back to the groups, they went back to the groups today, and we've had some feedback saying, this is not exactly what we were saying in our group, or this particular thing has not been emphasized. And so we will rewrite the document in accordance with that. But there are three hearings uh, from, uh, not tomorrow, the day after, and there'll be three hearings where we'll, the whole conference has an opportunity of reflecting on the document itself. The, the themes that we have so far outlined, of course, is the introduction and the retreat, which were integral to the whole conference. And the way the narrative, of course, is formed is from Bible studies, from plenary sessions, uh, from discussions that people might have. They bring it to their indaba, and from there it is entered into the document that we call the Reflections document. And so far we have uh, outlined Anglican identity, evangelism, social justice, ecumenism, environment, and of course today was other faiths. So the document is before you. It's a very preliminary document. As I said already, we have had some feedback saying this emphasis is, is not what we were expecting from our group. And so we've had to go back to the reporter and say, have you really taken this into heart? And so it's a process of conversation. And we hope at the end of the day, on the Saturday, to be able to produce for the conference a document which will be a narrative, a living, breathing narrative of, uh, of the church, the Anglican Communion. And we've been trying to be faithful to the Indaba process, uh, which has four degrees of faithfulness. One is faithfulness to the gospel, and that's why the Bible study groups are so critical, 
our engagement with the Bible, faithfulness to the Indaba process itself of respectful listening, faithful to the communion around us, the Anglican communion, but also being faithful to the bishops who have gathered here and that their voices in fact are heard. So thank you.